Next question is from Brandon Lee X. What's your main health concern for the next generation? Boy, you know, Mm. besides the one that is just on everybody's minds that we talk about all the time, the obesity epidemic and all the the issues that that causes, you know, the the fertility issues are starting to become uh, really alarming. You know, the, I don't remember what the statistic was, but young men today have the same fertility as old men did you know, decades ago, like a few decades ago, uh, women today are losing their fertility at record uh, rates, even young women. This is a a bit alarming because it's like the canary in the coal mine. Like as you, when you're not healthy, one of the first things that starts to go away is your ability to reproduce. So for men, sperm motility or sperm number starts to go down. Of course, hormones associated with those things start to, you know, reflect that. With women, they start to be, have much more trouble conceiving and then trouble holding on to a healthy, you know, birth. This is scary because this has profound uh, potential, you know, effects in the future. Now, in my opinion, in my strong opinion, this is connected to the health epidemics that we've already been uh, watching, you know, the fact that people are becoming more and more obese, the fact that people are becoming weaker and weaker. This is, by the way, one that we haven't talked about a lot, which is we all know about the obesity epidemic, but we're just starting to realize that what's going along with that hand in hand is this weakness epidemic. Uh, mm-hmm. So like, for example, there was a study that was done where they tested young men, like college men's grip strength. And these these young men's grip strength was like what you see a sixty year old man in the nineteen eighties, which is right. that's really right. that's not very good, right? And with women, we also saw a, a, you know a weakening of their strength as well. This is not a good thing. All of this is not a good thing. So I think what's happening is we're just this is a reflection of how much we've changed our environment. We've made life very easy. Food is very easily accessible. It's not very healthy, but it tastes really damn good. And our microbiomes are being affected by antibiotics and by chemicals that we're constantly exposed to. And so you've got all these different things coming together. And now the scary thing is happening, which is, holy shit, if we stay down this path, I think the last time I read about this, they said something like by 2040 or something like, like, like not that far from now, like a couple couple decades we would lose our ability to procreate, which is, that's not cool. Yeah, I think just along those lines, the weakness part of it is something that I've really started to see more than I'm venturing outside of our bubble. We talk a lot to people that are in the gym and that are pretty focused on improvement and, and weight rift, weight, weight rifting, weight, <laughs> weight rifting. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, that's Scooby. something that they're into. <laughs> Woo, Scooby. Uh, and... Uh, just getting back into it and realizing that uh, the general public, it's they're they're fascinated by uh, working out. Like they have never been taught a lot of the skill of working out and and being in the gym and lifting weights. And so there's just to me, it's pretty alarming. I felt like growing up, that was a big part of how you played sports. You had to get better in the gym in order to to play better in sports. And I just don't see the same drive and the same um, appeal that sports used to have, which was a, a massive outlet for for this country. And I know elsewhere uh, to, to display your your physical abilities. And, and I just feel like we've kind of shifted a lot more to video games and uh, like professional video games. Even they're making more than professional athletes now. And so it's just interesting to see how the culture shift uh, with with all these types of things that have you know impacted just your average person. Uh, I'm going to be a little less of an alarmist. I don't think we're going to see anything. I don't. I think we're going to be able to reproduce. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, that or science will find a way to fucking fix that. And I also think that we tend to go one way and, and get real extreme, and then we all kind of wake up and come the other direction and overcorrect. Uh, but the thing that I notice, even about myself, uh, the bad habits or behaviors or the things that I've seen. Uh, myself start to pick up and do is that we have evolved to a place where very little movement is required to do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's taking more and more effort to get out and just move period. I mean, I I have to plan it. Yeah. I would like to say exercise and strength. That's been a problem forever. I mean, most people didn't strength train and exercise forever. But what I what to me is more dangerous or scarier uh, about the future is this how immobile. I mean, the the way the body works is if you you don't use it, you lose it. And so 
I, I'm, I'm worried about the generation coming up. Just we keep making everything so convenient. And to your point about video games and your point about things being delivered to you and stuff like that. I mean, we're, we're heading in this direction where you, you're just not going to move. Yeah. I mean, n not There's just no real incentive to do it. Right. Anymore. Exactly. There's no incentive to really do it other than hopefully that you would still be able to do it, which I don't know if that's enough motivation for the, the generation coming up. So, and I, and I also, again, back to my point, what I see with myself, like we're fitness enthusiasts and I still see how much my behaviors have changed. I mean, I love DoorDash. I use things like that all the time. I have streaming everything now too. And so I don't go out and, and kill my food or pluck or pick my food. Like everything is brought to you. And I mean, I don't even go to the grocery store anymore since COVID and got used to using delivery service. So I just, and you, you just start doing these things and you go, oh, this is so cool. And this is so great. But nobody sits down and goes like, oh, you know, in a year's time, on average, I would go to the grocery store, say, you know, 50 times. And in those 50 times, I take X amount of steps, which is X amount of calories. And, and like nobody is factoring that in. Like you've just pruned that off of your life, you know, and that going forward. And we just keep doing that. So I, I'm most concerned just about that, the generation coming up just flat out moving. Yeah, along those lines, you know that the, there's a huge increase in kids uh, with back pain and neck pain, mm -hmm. yeah. going to the doctor. Oh, yeah. And they were blaming it at first on backpacks. In fact, some schools were telling kids, oh, it's to because- To wear in the front and stuff, not, right? Either wear in the front or to, to have those rolling bags because they think that the problem was, it's not the backpacks. No. It's that kids are not strong yeah, oh, they're, and they're not they're moving. They're not actually, And you're seeing forward head, you're seeing forward shoulder, you're seeing really bad posture, uh, back pain. You know, I remember- when I first got certified as a trainer, type 2 diabetes wasn't called type 2 diabetes. It was called adult onset diabetes. And that's because only adults got it. So it's something that you developed as an adult through your eating habits and your lifestyle. Well, sometime in the 90s, early 90s, I believe, they changed the name to type 2 diabetes because kids started getting it. Yeah. Well, back pain was that's non-existent for kids for a long time. Like when does a kid, unless a kid hurts themselves, like falls, falls off something, but a, a kid never went to the doctor for chronic back pain. You're now seeing this, chronic back pain and chronic neck pain. Well, so. you see schools eliminating a lot of their physical education because of the funding or whatever the case is, but there's been a lot less emphasis on physical education and, and outlets, uh, after school programs and things that they could be a part of. And, and I really feel passionate about that. That needs to be a massive priority totally. that, that we shift. They've done such a stupid job with it because A, they didn't value it. And they said, this is not as important as science and math. They did the same thing to music, by the way. Yeah. And now we're finding- Everything has to be cognitive. Yes. Based, and, yeah. and what we're finding now is music and activity makes you better at everything else. And they're all they're very, very important. It's all important. intertwined, yeah. And number two- They've systematically taken out some of the most valuable activities and games out of the at a recess and out of PE because they're too competitive or because yeah, somebody kids, feels left out. Or, yes, or so whatever. stupid. Like the stuff that you learn, like the, what you yeah. learn playing games like that is are there important lessons? And yeah. is there a chance? These are formative that? years where you're going to have to learn um, these challenges, and it's it's better to learn them early than to learn them way later in the workforce and you don't know how to deal with it. Mark my words. The next thing for them to start to remove from schools are test scores. Mark my words. Oh Why? My because some kids get bad scores yeah. and they feel bad and you can't have kids feeling bad because everybody needs to feel the same. Mark my words. It's going to follow the same path that we saw with activity, which is totally ridiculous. And I think that'll be the death uh, of public education because parents are going to be like, that's enough. I'm taking my yeah. kids out. So anyway.